preacher, Brother Howard, would pray for us. Father, it's an honor for us to be here. Father, your word tells a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Father, we need the word to keep us. We need the light of your word to walk in the path of holiness. So, Father, bless Brother Campbell. Give him that book you stand in need of. Father, not just a message, but the message of the hour. Anointed. Father, we pray the enemy will not steal 1,000. Now bless our heart. We pray that the word will fall on good ground, good yes, soul, yes. and we might produce fruits of righteousness. Yes. Bless him, we pray, in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Greet all of you in Jesus' precious name. Very glad that you are here. Yes, yes. Supporting the meeting. And we appreciate that. Uh there's a little short coming. I'm not going to say no more about it. Brother Howard been living in town too long. <laughs> and we've brought up a whole lot of like because we've been talking. And then uh, he talking about, yeah, yeah, see there. Then he talking about hearing those noises. And he would not have paid any attention to those noises years ago. But been in town too long. But anyway, he needs a prayer partner. And so maybe tomorrow night we'll just have an all-night prayer meeting. Would that sound good? And we'll get a prayer partner and take intervals while we pray 30 minutes at a time like we have done in the past. How many would like to do that? We'll have somebody go to about midnight, but we'll have to have some more. All right. We'll, let's think about that tomorrow night. The more of your desire. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, in Mark chapter 13. Um, it was, uh, I told the ministry this morning, we didn't have too much of a message. Just Sunday morning something, and um, it was somewhat of an exhortation of what we had in mind. But then the Lord, we were studying something about something a few days ago. Now, this is puzzling sometimes. There's times we don't have no message. We try to struggle to get a message for the people at times. And then sometimes we have two or three thoughts. And so we, I was praying, Lord, now, which one? And in my mind, which one do I want? Which one do the Lord want? So I feel like the Lord directs me this way and more toward a message for us in this present time in which we're living in and things that we are certainly dealing with. The exhortation, if I had the exhortation to go with briefly, would be, and I've been encouraging in the meeting this way, encouraging the saints before the meeting, we need Jesus to come. And more, we, we, don't need a, we don't need a good preacher as much as we need Jesus. All right, a good singing, and we've been mentioning that. Thank God for a good preaching. Thank God for good singing, but we need Jesus. We don't need demonstration in the flesh. Uh, preachers can be demonstrative, and that does not necessarily mean God is with them. We can walk the aisles and hands up and shouting, and walk in the back of the pew, running over them or whatever. And that don't mean the Lord's with anybody. We need Jesus because when Jesus comes, it's going to be some effects to it. When he came in the, in the incarnation, when he came in the flesh, when he went somewhere, something was accomplished. The blind received their sight, the deaf hear. The dead was brought to life, the lame was made to walk, the blind to see. The poor had the gospel preached unto them. Those that was... Tired and weary was refreshed. Amen. So that's what we need. Amen. Now we've got to figure out what's going to get them here. All right. Are y'all interested in Jesus coming? Yes. Now when Jesus comes, he's going to show you to yourself. You want to see yourself as, you, as the Lord sees you? Because when he comes, he's going to reveal you to you. If you got anything against anybody, he's going to point it out and say, no, you can't have that. You've got to deal with it. All right, let's go this way now. Mark chapter 13. We are living in 
strange times. Who would ever believe that our government would force upon us same-sex marriage? We thought it was bad. Some of us lived through some of these things when they forced prayer out of schools. And then they legalized abortion on demand. And now they are forcing us to accept perversion. Now, we, not, we don't hate people. We love people, no matter what lifestyle that they are involved in. We love people. Amen. But there's some things we cannot go along with. And so there's some things we have to stand against. And, and we know that's out there in the, in the world, in the secular world, and, and the blatant uh, upholding for it. We, we know there's something about that's repulsive. What the world is doing. But we can see that. We understand that. We know that. But what we have to watch for is right in the midst of us. Things that will come in. Things that will happen. That we're going to have to be able to discern the right and the wrong of it. To be able to know, is this of God or not? One of the number one things, if you read in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, we have mentioned this before, and I'll try to speak clearly enough that you can understand what we are saying. But Jesus said, take heed, lest you be deceived. And the devil's not going to come to you and say, now I am the devil. Any of the devil people are not going to come to you and say, I'm of the devil. And I come to deceive you. Right? The devil's not going to be that open. He's not going to say, hey, I'm dropping by tonight to deceive you to take your soul to hell. You're not going to do that. A preacher's not going to get in the pulpit and say, I'm here this morning to deceive you all that you can go to hell. People uh, in selling their goods spiritually, that's of the devil, is not going to tell you who they are and what they're doing. Amen. Because they're going to be deceptive. They're going to be uh, using power to seduce. Right. And we got to be able to understand what is going on. Jesus said, not everybody says unto me, Lord, Lord. He's going to enter into the kingdom of God. He even said in one place, many shall say in that day, Lord, have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many mighty works? And he said, depart from me. I, I never knew you. Ye workers of iniquity. So it doesn't matter, saints. Listen, please pray with me about this. It doesn't matter how we may look. How we may demonstrate. How much scriptures we can quote our presentation in presenting something. What makes the difference is that we're living without sin in our lives. Because there are a lot of people that can sing good and look good and demonstrate good. But they're no good. They're not of the Lord. And we're going to have to be able to discern that. Because there's only one reason why that they come around, and that is to deceive you. That I'm not interested, and please understand where I'm coming from. I'm not, I'm not uh, being rude. I hope you all understand me, what I'm saying. I hope my spirit is sweet to you this morning, not ugly. I hope you understand what that means spirit to this morning. But I'm not interested in what people think about me. I don't, I'm not interested in that. Friend or foe. What I'm interested in is what Jesus thinks about me. Because there's no man nowhere that's going to judge me. 
when I stand in that day, it's going to be sweet Jesus. So I have to, I have to know him. And we we'll have to be right with him. See, I can be right with the ministry and have uh, utmost confidence in the ministry that is here. I got acquainted with them, know them even more intimately, closely, and have confidence in them. But they're not going to judge me in the last day. And so what I need, I need to have this relationship such with Jesus that he can speak to me from time to time and tell me everything's all right. Amen. Well, no matter what people are saying, no matter what they may be thinking. So I know the hour's getting on, so let me go on with this here. Mark chapter 13, I'd like to start reading. Verse number 20, dealing with the time. Of overthrow of Jerusalem by Titus around 70 AD. Mainly what Jesus was talking about here. Uh, but we want to draw something from it. Because as it was then, so is it now. And except, the day, except that the Lord had shortened those days. No flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. And when he's talking about shorten the days, he's talking about shorten uh, the days of war, of battle. He was going to shorten that time and give a quick victory to the Romans. Because the Jews had uh, disobeyed God, we know that, had rejected the Messiah. And so the Lord allowed this to happen. Foretold. The Christians got out of Jerusalem. They left. History tells us. He said, if the days had not been short and a quick victory game, then people would have lost their lives because they had to hide in caves and uh, out in the, in the wilderness, as it were. So the Lord shortened that. He gave them a quick victory. Okay. And then, if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ. Or lo, he is there, believe him not. For, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce. They say during that period of time that there was a couple of men that was able to do uh, signs or wonders. One man was able to spit fire out of his mouth. Now the devil has some people that can work too. They vomit up fire. So surely this is a great man of God. He can throw up fire. He said, false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. For what purpose? To seduce. To turn you away from Jesus. From the true Christ. From the true Messiah. Whatever they do, they're doing it to get you off track. To get your, your spirit altered. To get your mind on something that's not of God. To, to uh, get you to become disoriented or disillusioned. All of that happened. The devil knows what he's doing. Who is saying uh, the other night? Was it Brother Dale said last night? The devil has 6,000 years on him. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to work. He knows how to seduce. He knows how to deceive. The Bible says seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So he knows what he's doing. Yes, yes. He's been doing it from the beginning. He's done it with Eve. He's done it in this period of time. He told them false Christ, false prophets shall rise. Show signs, wonders to seduce. If it was possible, even the elect take heed. Behold, I have foretold you all these things. Now, what I get out of that, you pray with me, please, please. Pray with me. Show St. John chapter 15. To me, as I read that portion of scripture and was studying about it, I come to the conclusion that the elect will not be deceived. Because the Bible says. If it were possible. So that left me with the impression that it is not possible for the elect to be deceived. So the title of the thought this morning is in a question form. 
why are in the statement form, why the elect will not be deceived. God has a people. Thank God today. In 2015, in this wicked world, where sin is unleashed and has its freedom and has its liberty and where righteousness is, what I'm saying, weighted down, oppressed, suppressed, God has a people. Just like he's always has a people down through the age of time, God has a people today. And I'm saying that those, that elect of God, will not be deceived. But I'm going to tell you why. All right? Watch. Say, for many will come saying, I'm Christ. Or Christ is here. Or Christ is there. And even show great signs and wonders. Having such power. Being so uh, demonstrative and in their presentation that would almost convince you that that's of Jesus. You hear me? That people can get up and sing like a songbird and draw people to tears. They get their handkerchief out and have to wipe their eyes, but they're of the devil. They know how to work on the flesh. Yes, sir. They can cause goose bumps to go up your back. And your little hair, what you have left, stand up on top of your head. But they are the devil. Amen. They can preach such judgment yes, yes, yes. as if somebody would grab you in the shirt collar and say, you're not right, that brother. Yes. But they are the devil. Yes. Mm. All right. You understand me? Yes, we understand. Well, Jesus even said that. They're going to say have we not done all of these great, wonderful, mighty things? Yes. But the ending part of that is, it says, depart from me, I never knew you. Though a person might have started out right and messed up, the Bible tells us all the righteousness they have done would not be mentioned against them, for them. Because they went off and left it and as if they have never been righteous. And that's why Jesus said, I never knew you. Because you work iniquity. The Lord will not, uh, will not ever tolerate sin in his, among his people. Amen. If we start allowing sin among us, then please take the name church of God off of it. And holiness. Now, there is a reason why the elect will not be deceived. But we got to find out who are the elect. These are sent to seduce. But there, there are going to be a lot of people deceived. All right, now the Lord help me with this then. When the, first, the saints first come to our community, I was telling somebody this the other day, to our community, when the church of God first came. There was the other religious group that came before they did. And they seemed with power and able to demonstrate under some type of a supernatural force. And my great grandmother, she went every night, had a two or three week meeting, she went every night. Her twin brother, that her husband's sister, went with him. I mean, yeah. There's, there's double marriage there, you know. Brother, sister, married, brother, sister. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Not brother, sister marrying each other, but brother, sister married, brother, sister. All right. They got them. That's her twin brother, born about the same time. And his wife was my great grandfather's sister. But my grandmother said, great grandmother said, this is not of the Lord. This is not of the Lord. God is not in this. This power comes from something else outside of the Lord. So she said, I'm not going with this. Y'all can. 
But then when the saints came into the community and held about a two or three week meeting, she went every night to that and she said, the Lord is in this. All right. See, there was something within that let her know that God is in this. Amen. And this is what I need to take my stand with and come out where I'm at and take my stand with this. And her twin brother went with the religious group that was led by foreign spirit. A strange spirit. Why didn't he understand it? They sent to seduce. If it was possible. But who are the elect? And not some category of group of people that were predestined before the world began. And had no choice in this thing. See, we're not born to be saved or born to be lost. Yes, that's right. Not automatically are we predestined, as it were, no matter what we've done. I had relatives down in Texas called the primitive people. And they said, you're born to go to heaven or you're born to go to hell. You have no choice in it. That's kind of sad, isn't it? That's an awful unjust God. I had no choice whatsoever. I was either born to go to heaven or I was born to go to hell. They try to sing Amazing Grace and take them all day nearly to get through the first verse. That's how they sung. They had no joy in nothing. Amazing. But anyway. So they, they, there was a teaching that the elect is, they predestined before the foundation of the world. God had it in his mind that a certain few was going to be saved. And that's called the elect. That's not Bible. No, it's not. Yeah, thank God it's not. But the chosen ones are the ones that choose Christ. Amen. Are in that category. Many are called, but few are chosen. What it's talking about, the Bible says the grace of God that appeared to all men. God deals with every soul. God deals through the preaching of his word. God's spirit goes out there and flows, and he talks to men and women and boys and girls, and he calls them. Tonight is your night. This morning is your morning. Today is your day. I want you to accept me. He goes out there, whether they're laying on a couch or whether they're driving down a car, whether they're sitting on a church pew, amen, whether they're eating at Wendy's, double stack. God speaks to them. Amen. Old Brother Maul sitting on the bar stool, they tell me. Yes. Amen. And God began to deal with him. Many are called, but few are chosen. Why? Many are called, but few choose yes. to go this way. All right, those that are called and then choose are the elect of God. That's right. Amen. But that doesn't say it at all. Either. Now, I'll give you a few scriptures. John 3, 15, 16. Brother Brandon, talking about simple scriptures. The other night, listen to what it says here, that whosoever. That throws predestination off of the ship into the ocean without a lifeboat or even a life saver, life jacket. It throws it out that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John eleven twenty six. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? John twelve forty six. I am come a light in the world, and whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Revelation twenty two seventeen. In the spirit and the bride say, Come and let him that heareth say, Come and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will. That whosoever means anyone, any person. Whatsoever, whether you was brought up in the darkest jungles of Africa or in the darkest piney woods of East Texas. Amen. Whether you was brought up in the city or in the country, Amen. whether it's mountain lion and bears yes. and bobcats. Amen. <laughs> and you had to pray by yourself. <laughs> no matter where you was born, no matter what ethnic background you come from, the world over, whether you're Australian and Austrian. Whosoever yes. is presented to anybody, everybody, rich, poor, yes. 
King of Papa. This salvation is presented to everybody because the Bible says whosoever will, let them come. That starts the process of being among the number among the elect. They will not be deceived. I want you to understand this. Those that are God's elect, those that are God's chosen children that chose him and chose some other things will not be deceived. The devil will come along and try his best to deceive you with all kinds of false spirits and doctrines to seduce you. What, he's, what the devil is after is to take you to a devil's hell. Right, the Bible says the hell was not prepared, amen, but for the devil and his angels. I want you to understand that God does not desire for you to go to a devil's hell. He wants you to go to a God's heaven. But you choose. You have the choice, and I tell you this too, you have the choice of whether what you want to be deceived or not. When we get down to it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go this, I'm going to go, say, Brother Clarence, then turn into a predestination preacher. He's predetermined for the foundation of the world that those that chose Jesus can go to heaven. It, it was determined before the foundation of the world that those, amen, that don't want to be deceived will not be deceived. Right. Choose. Amen. amen. Whosoever, anyone, any person, whatsoever, Jesus came and died for all men. And this is the will of God that all men be saved. He's not willing that any should perish. He did not die for just a few. He died for everybody. Amen. He didn't die for one nationality, one race of people. One race is not superior but another race. One people is not superior but another people. Sometimes we as Americans think we're superior to everybody else. Don't be deceived. We need Chinese missionaries over here, African missionaries over here. We become the heathen country now. You don't believe me, just go to the airport and wait for somebody to come in from the airplane and sit there and watch people yes. look at folk. It's most strange all the time. Now, please, please. I, I know how I am. Sometimes it seems so comical, but it, it seems strange to me. I saw two of the ugliest men I ever saw in my life holding hands, walking down by the carousel so we pick your luggage up. Because I've told y'all before, I never saw a good looking man know how. <laughs> but they were holding hand. They didn't kiss. They said, bold. They're bold. I mean, every now and again, you might see a, a, a man and a woman holding hands, you know, and you know that they're more than likely in love, but there's no way in this world I can ever picture in my mind two men ever being in love. So why in the world they won't hold hands? One of them wasn't blind. <laughs> Both of them could see. <laughs> no, nobody crippled. <laughs> so what was they hold hands for? Because they, they got deceived. They was deceived. Whosoever, anybody. All right, listen. We'll go forward. The elect are those who have answered the call from God to come. And have completely committed themselves to God. Burning all bridges behind them. Amen. Counting the supreme cost to go all the way with God. Live or die. Amen. Sink or swim. swim. Revelation chapter 4. Let's see a picture now. Come down to the point. I won't keep you all day. Just part of it. Why they will not be deceived. We understand who the elect are. Those that have been called of God and accepted the call. Those that have been challenged of the Lord and the spirit of God and the spirit of conviction have dealt with them and said, I want to make you my child. And they accepted that. Said, I will be your child, sweet Jesus. We'll go arm in arm the rest of our lives. It is not the Lord's desire that any of us be lost. To be deceived, you're going to be lost. I want the Lord to help us with this a little bit this morning because uh, so importantly, I think one of the mistakes that we have made or I say the devil has used among us is 
that we can go by feelings. As long as I feel like I'm his child, then I'm all right. As long as I can do certain things, then I'm all right. You cannot go by your feelings. The just, no, nowhere in the Bible will you ever read, the just shall live by their feelings. I have said it, and you heard me say this before. The devil can make people feel good when they ought to feel bad. Then he can make folks feel bad when they ought to feel good. The other night I woke up about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I didn't go to the tabernacle. But I did wake up about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up. When I woke up, a fear come over me. Like, no, I'm not right. I come in, this is of the devil. So I rebuked it. He went away. But then a depressed feeling came on me. Right as that Here comes another feeling. A depressed feeling. Oh, no use in going. No use in praying. It's not going to happen. No how. So you will give up and go and so that was depressed. Well, this is of the devil too. So I had to rebuke that and that left. And then a worried spirit came. Worrying about everything. Three o'clock in the morning. Like I can do something about anything at three o'clock in the morning. And I figured this is all of the devil. I cannot go by feelings. But this other stuff come with you, you know, I'm not saying inspiration, but... You know what I'm talking about? Impressions. You get impressed. People get impressed. Sometimes it's of the Lord. Most time it is not. I feel impressed that my wife is no longer young and beautiful, so I feel impressed to get me one that is young and beautiful. You better not go by no impressions. <laughs> you get in a world of trouble. And some even put it behind it, well, God gave me the impression. Revelation 14.1, please. Why they will not be deceived. Let's see the picture of the elect of God. And I'm not a revelation preacher, but there's something I got out of this. Will we leave, we'll leave that to Brother Wilson and Brother Katon? But there's something I got out of this. I do have an understanding that 144,000 is a, the elect of God. They're the people of God. And I looked, and the Lord Lamb stood on Mount Zion. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters, and as a voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which was redeemed from the earth. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, the virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, and in their mouth was found no guile. No doubt. No doubt. For there without fault. Amen. There's six things mentioned there, quickly. First of all, among those, God the Father named, written in their forehead. In other words, God had claimed them for his own. They are my children. They have my DNA. They have my spirit within them. They are my chosen. They are my elect. I have stamped my name in their forehead. They have made God their God. And, they, and only, only his will they understand for their design and their goal. They was completely his. That means God claimed us. That means God has accepted us. When we came to him and repented, God put his stamp of approval upon us and said, now, you are my child. And because you are my child, I'm going to put my DNA within you that the devil and everybody else will know that you have my traits, you have my characteristic. When they do a spiritual whatever on you, they will find out that they have God's DNA. His spirit is within them, and that's what makes them the children of God. You see, that's why we preach so uh, strongly. That you cannot become a child of God by joining the church. You cannot become a child of God by just being baptized. You cannot become a child of God just by learning the catechism. You cannot become a child of God just because you know scriptures and go to church. You have to be completely changed. Born again. Born of the Spirit. 
and of the word of God. And he puts his DNA within us. Now that means something. That means something. That means that we are his. So you may have a profession, but what about the possession? You may be able to say something that, uh, in, in a word that you are a Christian or a child of God, but in all reality, can God call you his child? Am I getting anywhere, please? That's, a, that's all important. Most important. All right? Number two. They were not defiled with women. And that means a woman and her daughters of Revelation chapter 17. That means Catholicism, Protestantism, and anyism. Groupism. Church of Godism. All right? They were not defiled with any. They were not going to allow themselves, in other words, to be influenced. And they was not going to flirt with any isms. Amen. They was not going to flirt with the world and man-made religious institutions. Right. They was not going to allow that to influence them in any degree. They kept themselves from such defilement. You can preach what you want to. You can demonstrate how you want to. You can act how you are, whatever you want to. You can even show great signs and wonders or claim them or proclaim them. But we're not having anything to do with you because you have the harlot. That's good, brother. And the Bible yeah. says the harlot has some daughters. Read that for me. Somebody go to Revelation chapter 17. And John saw her. And it says something about that. The mother of harlots. Not even just Catholicism that it was, but also all of her daughters. Any man-made religious institution said, we're not going to have anything to do with that. We belong to Jesus. Jesus is purchased with his own blood. We are the Father's children. All right? You get that. Number three. So he carried me away in the spirit. Go ahead. All right. That's the one. He's not going to be defiled def with that woman or those women. Not going to be defiled with the harlot nor any of her daughters. They're the Lord's. They're the Lord. I want us to understand that, saints. Please understand that. Because you think sometimes we get off and we, we're just preaching uh, uh, sect uh, 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 knowledge or terminology here. We're telling you what the Bible said. There are man-made religious institutions and God looks upon them as being a harlot. Are descending from the harlot. God will have nothing to do with that. He has a church that is exclusively his. Right. That is totally committed to him. And if that is the case, then you're in, a, in, the, in the place that you can be deceived. That's right. yeah. Flee it. Get away from it. Don't have nothing to do with it. Go to the heights of Zion. Amen. And be the Lord and the Lord's only. Amen. Amen. I hadn't heard nobody's feelings yet. I hope. Let's go a little further. They was virgins. They had resolved to be Jesus' bride and belong to him only. Having a close and an intimate relationship with him and again, him only. No flirting with the world, but only be loved with Jesus. Brother Brandon, please, if you don't mind. What in the world would you think about Sister Brandon if she's flirting with every man that ever come along? Oh, we can't even think that way, can we? My, my brain don't, can't, take can't, can't take it in. Can't take it in. Oh, brother, brother Charles, what would you think about that? Can't take it in no. <laughs> Nobody. Because we don't want it. Right, Brother Dale? Yes, sir. Our wives are ours and ours alone. Amen. To say that it would hurt my feelings would be a, a, a loss of words. <laughs> to say I would be disappointed I will come way shorter for what I'm trying to articulate to you. We want them to be ours and ours alone. 
You gonna kiss any man? Here it is. That's what we tell them, right? If you gonna hug any man, here he is. You gonna wink at any man? This is the one you wink at. All right. That's what we think about them. We are the church of God. We are the bride of Christ. We're His and His only. We don't flirt with the world. We don't want the world flirting with us. We don't have nothing for the world. Amen. We'll cut those ties. We're his and his alone. We belong to him. We've taken a vow. No matter what comes or goes, we belong to you, Jesus. Amen. And, and entirely, completely, without reserve, we're yours. And you do with us what you want to because we're yours. It was virgins. Paul said, as, as spouse you to, as a chaste virgin to Christ. We are the bride of Christ. And we have an intimate relationship. Do you know that there are things I tell my wife I won't tell nobody else? All right. Come on, please, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I hope, I hope you have such a wife that you share a thing with her, you share it with nobody else. My wife knows more about me than anybody else in this world. She knows more about me than my mother knew. Because I share stuff with her. She shares things with me. And that's the closeness that Jesus wants us to have with him. He wants us to tell him everything. He don't want us to hold back. He knows it anyhow. Amen. Some of you have been living so long with your companion, you can read them in out. You can say what they're thinking. When they go, they go start a, a, a sentence, you can finish it for them. Right? You know, you know what she's thinking. She can start telling something, you'll finish it. Oh, she has the way she does you. Okay. <laughs> you, you've been together so long, you know each other. You know what she likes and what she don't like. My wife does not like soup, but I do. <laughs> yeah, she'll make it for me. <laughs> yeah, she'll try it anyway. All right, you see what I'm talking about? We know each other. Jesus knows us, and we know him. I can, I can discern my wife's voice. I know her voice, and she knows mine. Years ago, when we was courting, she lived up here, and I lived in Texas. And her sister, Sarah, uh, just, just oh, went on the phone. You couldn't tell them apart. And we were just going to go ahead and got married. And I called, and Sarah answered the phone. And I, <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got the wrong one. <laughs> But now I can discern the voice. Yes, right. <laughs> I've been with her 28 years nearly, so I know what her voice sounds like now. <laughs> oh, please, Sarah, forgive me. <laughs> but there's a, there's a closeness that you know each other. We know the voice of God, and he knows our voice. Oh, Father, help me. Help. Oh, Father, I'm having this pain. Oh, Father, I'm having this sickness. And there's this closeness there. They're close together. Number four is all important. They follow the Lamb. They follow the Lamb. Their worship, their devotion, their admiration, their desire was only toward Jesus, to follow Jesus. Well, sir, he would lead them. They would hear his voice and not of another. They would be able to discern his voice above all others because they're living close to him and they're honoring him only. We got our eyes on Jesus and we're following him. Please, I hope you don't take me rude this morning or out of the way what I'm saying. And please understand where I'm coming from. For far too long, within the confines of what causes of the church of God, we've been following man too much. It's time to break free from that. Y'all hear me? Man rule has no part whatsoever within the confines of the church of God. For too long we've been following man. We've been listening to a voice of a man. We've been listening to direction given to us by man 
and they're saying it's coming from God, but something within our spirit, we're recognizing this thing is not of the Lord because the Father's name is in, imprinted in our forehead and we're virgins of Christ. Amen. And we're not associating ourselves with the heart or any of our daughters and we're following the Lamb. And we can see now something is not right here. Something down in our spirit is crying out and say, don't go that way no more. Amen. Lest you be deceived. Amen. Now thank God for the ministry. Thank God for those who consecrated themselves. I'm not taking away from that whatsoever. Thank God for those that are Holy Ghost full and those that are following the Lamb. Amen. Like all the saints are. And they're not elevated above nobody else. Amen. Amen. But all equal. Amen. On the same level. There's no big eyes and little U's in the ministry. No big eyes and little U's within the confines of the church of God. But we're all on the same level. And what judgment goes to the saints goes to the ministry. If that is the case, then the elect will not be deceived. When those are following man, you're going to be deceived. If you're following man this morning, you are going to be deceived. That's what it comes down to me. The Lord gave me this some time ago. In this last day that we're living in, everybody's fallen man is going to fall by the wayside. But those that have the eyes on Jesus and following him are going to go all the way through. They will not be deceived. They'll be able to discern what's of the Lord. What is right and what is wrong. All right, I've been standing against this for quite some time. And most importantly, come down to number five. There was no guile found. There's one thing that, as we're studying the scripture, we found out that Jesus despised above everything else was hypocrisy yes. and deceit. They were completely honest with themselves and with God. Amen. Nothing about them was anyway given to dishonesty. They did not speak one way and live something else. Now listen, this is why I said earlier, I'm not going to flatter you. Some, some people think I could be able to win you by flattering you. Oh, brother, you're so good. You're, so, oh, you, 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 you're such a wonderful preacher. And, and I, in my heart, I'm not saying that. In my heart, I know that you're not as good as a preacher as I am. <laughs> but I'm flattering and I'm saying oh you're the best preacher around all oh, I mean you can preach circles around me and all that but in my heart I'm saying you, you can preach that <laughs> compared to me I'm the best preacher in the, in the whole world my God, my God. Yes. nobody can do what I can do don't even try oh but you you that, that's guile that, that's trying to flatter people we are we are what we are let's just, let's not be disingenuous in the, in the least of the word, let's be frank and honest. Sure. I mean, you don't have to go be rude to everybody. Yes, and if they're ugly, tell them they're ugly, you know. But let's be honest. Yes. Right. Especially about spiritual thing. Yes. I try to get somebody. I don't have a side. Anyway, let me put this right here. I don't have a side. Lord. The Lord has one. Yes. I don't have a fellowship. I fellowship with the Father and His Son. I don't have a group. I'm with Jesus. And Jesus only. And I reach my hand in fellowship to every blood-washed one. Thank God. Amen. Because I know whether they have the Spirit of God or not. Because I'm of the Lord and He gives me His discernment. And if they have a bad spirit... It'll come out. The elect of God, thank God, will not be deceived because they fall in this category. If you fall in this category, and number six is without fault before the throne. Not before men only, but before heaven. They have heaven's holiness, not denominational holiness, not traditional holiness. Not works holiness, but God's holiness. You understand that? Yes. They're without fault before the throne. The Pope 
can vindicate who he wants to. That's right. Sure. There are priests who have messed up little boys' lives. Amen. And the Pope say, you all forgiven. Just go to a third parish somewhere. And if you do it all over again, come back to me and we'll redo this ceremony and then you can go to another one and keep doing the same thing. Denominational the same way. They can have corrupt preachers and the denominations that, okay, you're up there, uh, we'll take you somewhere else. Or do like some of the preachers uh, that confess when they got called <laughs> and they ordered to do something and then they wasn't going to do it, and the denomination set them down. And so I don't need you no more. I'll go off on my own. Yeah. And they went off on their own, built some, tried to build some kind of empire, but it didn't go very far. And y'all know who I'm talking about. A lot of these television evangelists were in such case. Right. But to be without fault before the throne. Amen. You see, you may be without fault before me yeah. in a body of ministers. Yeah. But the important thing is, saints, to be without fault before the throne. Because we're going to meet God. Amen. All right. Sew this up. I know what we're having for lunch. I'll go ahead and tell you. You should have to wonder what you wait for. We're having turkey and ham because I have put them on last night. All right. They're cooked all night long, real tender and juicy. Yeah, you can smell them when you went in the dining hall this morning. Well, get your mind off of it. Because we're going to sum it up with this here. Such a people will not be deceived. For they are, number one, they're honest. Completely honest. They're honest with themselves. They're honest with God. Number two, they are humble. They're clothed with humility. And when they do something wrong, they will not try to cover it up. When they make a bad judgment, they will not try to excuse it. They will humble themselves and say, Father, I was not right. All right? Honest. Humble. Holy. As I said, not having the form of godliness, not having a false holiness, but really having heaven's holiness about us. If we are honest, if we are humble, if we are holy, and number four, if we are heaven born and heaven bound, you will never be deceived. Y'all remember that? I called it four H's. What was it? Honest, Honest humble, holy, holy, heaven born. And you got heaven on your mind. You were heaven bound. I guarantee you this morning. On the authority of God's word, yes. you'll never be deceived. Praise the Lord. Yes. You'll never be deceived. You have to worry about it. The Lord will lead you right on through it. Okay, in closing. When Anderson apostatized and started allowing the world to come in, a lot of those could not comprehend it. That this thing that had been part of and gave the life to it was going to pieces. And they could not leave it. There was one old brother down in Louisiana. He told me about his mother and his father. They had came out of the Free Methodist. Free Methodist was holiness. I don't know if y'all know anything about the Free Method, but they taught holiness. Like a lot of the Wesleyan churches. They taught holiness, strict holiness. They believed like the old primitive uh, holiness, old, old pilgrim holiness and and a lot of those old holiness groups, they taught holiness, but they couldn't see the church. They didn't have a, a, a frame of the church in their mind. And so when they heard the Church of God message that God's people can be one and break down uh, the fences and we all be one in Christ Jesus, when they heard that message, they took their stand for that, the spiritual kingdom and all that went wrong among the, what the saints taught. All right. So they came out and they took their stand with the saints. But then when Anderson started going down, and they saw it, they said, this thing is hard. And she told her son, she said, it was so much easier for me to come out of the Free Methodist than for me to come out of Anderson. Because we had heard great things, and we'd seen such things, and such things as wonder. But it went down. 
The system came to pieces. The system was no longer used of God. But there was something about their spiritual DNA that connected with the Lord. And the Lord said, you can't stay there. You've got to come out. Now, this is what the Lord showed me. A lot of y'all heard this before. And I stand with this today. Years ago, I was telling somebody this the other day. Years ago when I first got saved and preaching, I was one among the Anderson people. just like a lot of the brethren here. And I saw that God was not in that thing. Okay? I don't want to offend nobody. I'm just telling you what my testimony is. But I begin to hear about all the different Church of God groups. Got all the publication. Oklahoma and Ohio and two or three places in Ohio and Tennessee. And man, I had about seven or eight of them papers. And I knew they didn't get along. And, but I knew there was Church of God. And I presented them to the Lord. And I said, now, Lord, which one of these you want me to be with? All of them claim to be Church of God. All of them say they're Church of God. And they all have the doctrine look like. Now, which of them you want me to be with? Because I knew Church of God was right. That's a Bible name. And what they taught fundamentally was right. So I just spread it out before the Lord. And I said, Lord, which one of these you want me to take my stand with? I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go, do whatever you want me to do. Which of them you want me to take my stand with? And I fell asleep. Y'all, some of you heard this. I'm going to stay with it. And I woke up in the middle of the night, and there's a light that's shining as bright as that one right there in a the dark room. And it was Jesus, and he spoke to me. He said, follow me. Amen. Follow me. God. You'll God. never go wrong in following Praise the Lord. God. So I shook off the bands of being with any denomination. Right. You didn't have any Amen. cliquish attitude or spirit with me. Amen. Any denominational idea, mentality. I am Jesus and his alone. And with that in mind, I don't have to worry about being deceived as long as I stay honest, humble, holy, and heaven born and bound. Amen. Yes. I'll make it. Shall we stand? Amen. I refuse if I put any bands on me. When I was with the movement, the Credential Committee, East Texas District, Brother Campbell, you can't do this. You got to do this. I tore my license up and threw them in the trash. I said, I'm Jesus and Jesus is alone. And I will listen to him, preach what he wants me to preach, go where he wants me to go, do what he wants me to do. All right. I love you, dear saints. I want you to know that. I hope you can feel that. Yeah. But the only one that I can ever afford to have influence upon me and lead me and guide me and give me direction has to be Jesus. Yeah. The elect of God will not be deceived. Yeah. Don't go from here, away from here. Allow the devil to deceive you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't know we have a song. Y'all want to sing anything? Do we have one? 299 in the blue and green book. Hymns of faith. There's a few of them scattered throughout the chapel. Did y'all get what I'm talking about? I didn't want to take up your time this morning and, and bother you about stuff and trouble your mind and all this kind of stuff. But you're going to have to be honest. You have to be humble. You have to be holy. Absolutely heaven born with your mind on heaven all the time. Because if you want to make heaven, you're going to be watchful and careful. Right. You're not going to allow the devil to deceive you because he's going to deceive so many people. That you can do this. The devil said you can do this. And God's word said, no, you can't. But I feel like I can. You're going to be deceived. All right. Keep heaven on your mind. Shall we sing 299? Is that right?